Good afternoon, everybody. Great to have you on again. Um, and welcome to this afternoon's webinar. Um, more of that in a minute. I've just come off a web interesting webinar myself, actually. Um, something with the international trade groups, the National Retail Federation in the States, um, which I have to say, I wouldn't necessarily suggest you all go on because it's a bit heavy. But anyway, um, it was it was quite interesting and it has got me reflecting on, you know, yet another strange week going on in retail terms. Um, and the fact that, uh, you know, there's been another announcement this week uh, that's perhaps left us uh, perhaps even more confused about uh, what the outcome of everything is as of the 22nd, which is tomorrow, uh, what, what restrictions are being lifted, what restrictions are still going to be in place. Um, but look, I'm sure it'll all come out in, in the wash. But coming back to that webinar, um, one of the things that struck me as it was going through was you could literally copy and paste it uh, and call it Ireland in terms of some of the issues um, that were being talked of. Shortages of stock, um, demand-led inflation, um, lack of people in the workplace, uh, all the things that certainly have been brought to our attention over the last um, few weeks and months. Um, and it does certainly appeal as though it's, it's very global at the moment. Um, there were a few little positive notes that were mentioned uh, on the webinar that have just come off. Um, get this, when you think back to where we were in the summer, there have now been one billion people have been vaccinated in India today. So they've just passed that milestone of one billion people having been vaccinated in India. So, you know, that's a positive story, isn't it? Um, the other positive story is that uh, the US uh, has just gone through what it appears as though we're going through at the moment in terms of this rise in cases and seem to be coming down the back end of it. So, you know, they're still a little bit concerned about further waves uh, of the virus going through into uh, into the winter, but uh, you know certainly they seem to be coming off the back of something at the moment. So maybe maybe look maybe this is is short term and maybe uh, we will start to to return to some form of normality. Uh, anyway, let me just introduce uh, our two speakers. I'm not going to talk much about Tommy because uh, we'll come on to him in a few minutes. But um, before Tommy gives us his few minutes, I'd like to introduce JP from the Me to You gift card company. Um, me to you who are our neighbours here in uh, Sandyford, uh, often bump into each other in the car park, uh, JP and myself, um, you know, and it is that point, isn't it, JP, at the moment around uh, people thinking around bonuses, uh, think people thinking about what can they give their staff uh, as they approach the Christmas peak, peak. and uh, I know you're just going to talk for a few minutes around the benefits of handing your people a, a, gift, a gift card for Christmas, and, uh, and obviously on the other side of this, retailers uh, taking them through the tills uh, running up to Christmas and beyond. So JP, over to you. Thanks a million, Duncan. Um, yes, it, it's a hot topic at the moment. Um, something was in the water on Monday this week because our office has just uh, gone into overdrive with uh, co companies wanting to talk about it and uh, finally starting to think about giving uh, gift cards to staff um, because it, it's something that uh, we thought they, they just weren't going to get around to doing. Um, so I'm just going to walk you through a, a couple of things. Um, I'm going to tell you about us for anyone who doesn't know who we are. Um, Me to you gift card. We're, we're an Irish company. We're a guaranteed Irish company. Surprisingly, uh, you, you're going to learn that we're the only Irish owned nationwide multi-store card. There isn't another one, um, despite where they're sold or what's written on the card. We're the only Irish owned card. We have over 6,000 outlets that accept the card and uh, lo lots of places that don't accept other cards, which people want. And we know they want them because they feature in our top accepting retailers, places like Pennies and that, especially at Christmas, they're uh, very appropriate. Um, I I'm going to just talk to you for a second about the small benefit exemption um, because there's a couple of rules around it. They were eased last year, but they're back and locked down again this year. So just don't get cut out. Um, it's 500 euro. Uh, is, is the allowance per reward. It is once per year. The first reward uses the tax break. So if you give someone 50 euro, you've lost 450 euro of a tax break that's available to you. So um, just be, be careful around that if you've already rewarded someone. Um, and it's limited to non-cash uh, rewards and gifts and a gift card is regarded as being non-cash. Um, if you're, if you're going to talk to us about do, doing some business, uh, which we'd love you to, different ways that you can do it with us, you can just contact us and place a corporate order. We'll put it through in the system. You can also use instant activation. Just ask us to send out a couple of cards to you in advance. 
and um, you can then go online and switch them on. You can mark down who you gave the card to, why you gave it and all that. And you can pull down a report as well if, you, if you're audited about what you did. Um, and looking to January, we can give you an online reward portal, which will uh, be fully branded up for you. Um, it allows you to drive in initiatives throughout the year for engagement and recognition. And uh, maybe seeing as it's hard to get staff to get, get CVs in from uh, friends and family of, of your current employees. Um, everyone has an electronic account, all rewards are issued electronically, and it allows multiple rewards throughout the year per employee. So you can have lots of different 15, 20, 25 euro rewards going to employees, which is something you can't do without this system. Greatest thing of all, it's revenue approved. So that's something to put in your diaries to do in January or talk to us in advance and we'll put that in place. The kind of companies that deal with us, they range from the very biggest employers in the company, in the country, like Air and Medtronic, um, and some of the biggest retailers, as you can see there, Smith, Smith's uh, uh, being the, the, the main toy store brand. Um, but the, we, de we deal with companies of, of every shape and size. Um, so that's my short little piece. Um, if you want these slides, just contact me, let me know uh, if you want to have a chat and uh, I'm in here and available. Okay, thanks a million. Great stuff, thank you, JP. Always, uh, always good to have you guys on board. So, uh, thanks a million for that. Um, right, I am uh, in a moment just going to hand over to Tommy. But uh, as we go through, usual rules apply. If you've got uh, any questions, please stick them in the chat box uh, at the bottom of the screen there, and um, we'll come to them at the end and do a bit of a Q and A if we can. I'm sure you'll be up for that, Tommy, won't you? Um, 100%. Yeah. And uh, uh, and if we don't, for whatever reason, get to any questions, we'll copy and paste them, come back, and uh, we'll, we'll come back to Tommy and get some answers. Um, so, look, title of this, I think, was what, what was it, Tommy? Christmas with Tommy Smith. So something like that. No, yeah. Doesn't yeah. it feel a little bit like Christmas <laughs> Jamie with Oliver the or something like, you know? Yeah, I was more yeah. thinking Christmas with the cranks, Tommy, you know, but I'm sure it's, it's nothing like cranky in the Smith household at Christmas, is it? Oh, of course not. Of course Absolutely. not. Absolutely. Um, I laugh. Like most of you, you watch most Christmas specials, especially with cooking and the likes of that. They, they do seem to be filmed in summertime. So I'm looking out at a lovely autumn, uh, autumn afternoon here now. But um, I think forewarned is forearmed is probably the reason we're doing we're doing the likes of this before Halloween even hits. Now, you know. Absolutely. Um, well, listen. Floors to you, and uh, I'll come back to you at the end. Thanks, Tommy. Probably. Thank you, Duncan. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for, for tuning in to another one of our webinars. Um, so yeah, Christmas Christmas and October, but, but I suppose, look, what, what I've tried to put together as, as most of the time I, I like to do in a webinar is, is take a, th a theme and try to give you as many, um, I suppose, an eclectic mix of issues as possible, um, rather than doing, I sometimes find a, a, a more boring deep dive into one issue. So when it comes to Christmas, this is kind of a the eclectic mix of what keeps probably our office and most employment lawyers busy around this time of the year. Okay, so so really, it's just trying to get ahead of some of these things. So sow the seeds in your in your in your brains now. And like I said, for forewarned is for is for armed. All right. Um. So okay, look straight in with maybe the the biggie. You know, things like Christmas parties and social events, which. Which, which may be back on the radar this year. Um, I, I say maybe, obviously, you know, we're, we're, we're not quite hitting the levels tomorrow in terms of freedoms that we'd hoped. And I know there's, you know, you, you visit the new sites, there's, there's, there's issues with, with um, intensive care admissions, but look, I suppose, still predicting, we hope there to be some form of social gatherings or that we can run social gatherings for our team. And look, the first point there is, you know, if, if COVID certs are still being checked, what does that mean for unvaccinated people being able to actually get in to attend these events? Um, clearly nothing's changed from my last webinar in terms of you having an ability to directly ask, ask people are they vaccinated or not. Um, and in reality, one can say from an employer's point of view, you're, you're running an event and if someone can't come in or, 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 or doesn't, has chosen not to get the vaccine, which is their right, um, just be conscious that may, that may lead to an issue in terms of their attendance if as we progress into the, the, the end of the year, um, you know, certs are still being demanded by hospitality venues. Um, I suppose moving on from that, and you know, you, you think about Christmas parties and you think about people arm in arm swaying and singing to, to various songs, you know, and I suppose obviously if parties are going ahead this year, um, 
you know, issues like social distancing and, 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 and hygiene etiquette will still be in place in most venues, you're in, in all venues you're going to go to, all right? Um, I, I, the list of pointers I'm kind of giving now on, on things like parties and social events, where I'm going to with this, as you'll see on the next slide, is some sort of a, an email or a memo or something to people in advance of it. That, that's maybe where I'm coming to with this. And so the little, the little pointers that you may very courteously want to make people aware of um, in some form of pre-party or pre-event uh, note are, are, are things like this. And a little reminder that, look guys, we're not quite at the level yet where we're gonna be in a big circle doing some sort of a dance. You know, that there's going to be social distancing and hygiene etiquettes, and even after maybe a few jars or a few glasses of wine, you're going to have to remember that. Um, that's what was COVID specific things this year. Obviously, like every single year, you know, we get calls and you read stories, guys, about, you know, the, the types of, you know, dignity at work issues where people get quite brave after, after a, a bit of booze and there's rows and there's arguments, there's unwelcome attention, inappropriate physical contact, inappropriate comments. These are the these are the par for the course now that, you know, while no Christmas parties for the last year or so may have may have, um, you know, put them to the back of our minds. But you have to remember these. I mean, every single year people get fired around Christmas for inappropriate behavior at workplace events. So definitely whether there was COVID around or not, I'd be having this webinar with you and the vast majority of these points I'd be saying to you still, okay? Um, so definitely a reminder on, you know, what's acceptable workplace-based behaviours because a company Christmas party is an extension of the workplace. That's long since established in, in, in legal cases. So obviously you're now taking responsibility for a work event where people are boozed up. And if there's inappropriate sexual harassment, it's it's most certainly front and centre uh, your issue to deal with. Um, so a preventative strike in terms of a reminder on behaviours is what we're talking about here. Obviously, under any under 18s, guys, um, you do want to look at things like, I suppose, you know, parental permission. Um, and, and certainly you want to take take care that maybe nobody is sneaking the young lad a, a cheeky bottle of beer under the counter or a, a cheeky, you know, bottle of something is, 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 is being is being bought for 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 a young girl or young lad that, that that's coming to the party. Um, I suppose another one is, and, and I, again, I say this, do I say it from personal experience? Possibly, but, but just from, 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 from um, speaking to a lot of you guys as well as, you know, it, it's fine, especially in retail being a seven day business, no matter when you have the Christmas party, someone's on duty the next day. So someone has to come into work in a, the proper order, has to be trusted to attend work the next day, has to turn up in a proper way to do a, do a decent day's work. And obviously, again, you have to be conscious that depending on what time the likes of the Christmas party would finish up on, if you know people are people are driving to work the next day, again, you have to be careful of this concept of vicarious liability, where, like, you know, you, but by you creating an environment where people are going to be drinking and drinking late into the night, you know, the responsibility isn't completely abdicated for you, making sure they're okay the next day. Um, okay, unofficial Christmas parties, obviously, you know, certain groupings of people may go out for a jar themselves, may, you know, book, book a meal themselves. All right, it, it doesn't quite have the same front and center if it's not sponsored or paid for or, um, you know, um, create arranged by you guys. But you still need to kind of address the fact that if you have work colleagues going out, having a few drinks, there could still be roused, there could still be unwelcome contact. And while while that party itself may not be your responsibility, the effects of that party in the workplace the next day, the, the awkwardness, the cold shoulders, the disputes, the rouse could, could well lead into a workplace dispute. Um, important points as well, guys, is, is maybe in, in any kind of pre-party um, um, memo, when is the party over as far as you're concerned? You know, um, when is there a cutoff point? Because obviously there's the temptation for some people to have a bit of an after party or a bit of a shindig or a trip back to Johnny's house for a few extra cans or a few glasses of wine or something like that. So you just need to be clear as to when a year, as far as you're concerned, there's a close off point. And um, and one again that maybe isn't isn't front and center in people's minds is uh, some sort of again uh, a responsibility to make sure people get home okay. Um, you, I, I've read stories and I've heard of stories before where 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 there's been you know kind of um, so certain you know people have been have been um, sexually assaulted kind of after a Christmas party where there's you know there's a lot of drink involved and and on the way home there's, there's been issues like that again. If an employer is paid for drink or sponsored drink to get a person in a certain position, you do have a, an element of responsibility to make sure that 
that uh, people can get home okay from from that event. Um, so I think you know what what I've read up and things to things to consider is even the venue you choose is it is it near or next to or close to public transport routes? Could you provide in your memo your pre-party kind of you know um, uh, memo provide information on nearby links or provide um, taxi numbers or at the venue suggest maybe as the party winds up that kind of that uh, parties taxis could be called now or could be called to the venue to bring people home safely. Um, and a final point. Guys, then is um is 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 social media GDPR. Obviously, you know people will let their hair down, will cut loose, will you know pose for photos possibly with colleagues. But again, you just need to be careful that at certain times of the night, if certain photos are taken of people in certain types of positions or compromising positions, you know um we live in a day and age where you probably need to tell people in advance. Look, guys, you know just be careful. Whatever we're taking a snap of somebody putting that up all over Facebook or putting that up all over Instagram or whatever other accounts are there, just uh, don't do it, basically. You know, if you don't have permission for people to use people's people's photograph, uh, I, I just wouldn't do it. Um, I'm trying not to sound like the Grinch guys. I'm trying to sound it as logically as possible. Um, but look, what I'm what where I'm coming from in this is, is, you know, some of those points, guys, you know, in a, in a, in a very calm or logical email, you know, in advance, it says, look, guys, we're really looking forward to to, to being able to celebrate the last year and a half and celebrate you guys and, and sponsor a meal and sponsor a few drinks. But look, humor us on a couple of points we have to make to you in advance. And it's about encouraging fun, but it may be reminding people of certain, certain do's and don'ts and certain responsibilities. Um, annual leave. So look, I know this is probably um, both the general point I'd like to make to people this time of the year, as, as well as the likes of the Christmas thing. But, um, <clears throat> you know, certainly last year was a basket case of a year in terms of, of annual leave. Um, but that's contaminated this year, I found. OK, so it's always worthwhile this time of the year doing a little stock take on where people are in terms of annual leave totals, most especially in an industry like retail, when, you know, if it starts to heat up, there may not be many annual leave gaps left on the roster. So when can annual leave be taken between now and the end of the year? Because if if you have the likes of December as a black zone where you don't really allow holidays, you're running out of time for people to be able to wash through 2021 holidays. Unless you're going to agree to allow people to carry over a certain annual leave into 2022. But again, like, you know, are you still doing that because that's your normal policy anyway? Or are you going to allow uh, holidays into 2022 as a you know, special dispensation because COVID hasn't gone away and, you know, we're, we're, we'll do it on a once off? Consider that, guys. Have a think about it. Make a decision on it. Um, over the Christmas period, do you have any mandatory annual leave days? Uh, generally office, generally support offices you guys may have. But again, in the contract of employment or in an employment handbook, do you have that, you know, people have to reserve two, three, four days of annual leave to, um, to, for, for mandatory day closure days uh, around Christmas? Um, have a look at that. Have a look at the way that Christmas falls. I, I'm going to go into public holidays in a second. But again, um, figure out how many leave days over this office closure you're going to have Christmas 2021 and, and let people know maybe in advance. Do you allow anybody to take holidays over Christmas? If you do, if you can afford to let one or two or three people go on holidays, perhaps, you know, is it first come, first served? Are people, are people who are due holidays who haven't taken them? Again, thinking about the likes of that now avoids unnecessary strife down the line if it's if it's kind of managed in a more ad hoc way and there's bad feeling because people thought they might be able to get holidays and now they can't. Public holidays. I'm going to discuss them specifically now in a second, but um, the public holidays are Christmas Day, St. Stephen's Day and New Year's Day. OK, but what, what where I'm going with my mandatory leave days generally office slide leading into this is um, what, what, what may happen in many of your desk diaries. What often happens when they fall on a weekend like that on a Saturday and a Sunday is the Monday and the Tuesday being the 27th and the 28th are referred to as bank holidays and they may be bank holidays, but they're not public holidays. So what you can do if you want to is transfer the benefit from the Saturday and the Sunday onto the Monday and the Tuesday. OK which would mean that certain office people wouldn't have to take those annual leave days. Try and stay with me on this now, or if I sound, if, 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 it, if I'm complicating it too much, guys, I'll say at the end, please feel free to give us a call or, or send us an email on it, okay? But again, for, for people, just be conscious, people who may be off work over Christmas, like offices and stuff like that, look at the 27th and 28th and how they relate to the public holidays and whether people are gonna to have to take annual leave to take those days off or whether it's transferred public holidays entitlement. Okay, so, the 26th, 25th, 26th, and the 1st of January, they are the public holidays full stop. 
okay? And any entitlement employees have to a full day or partially, it's based on these days, right? That does mean that this year it does fall badly for many store colleagues, maybe especially store colleagues who generally work um, a Monday to Friday roster because they may get the likes of Christmas Day or possibly Christmas Day and Stevens's Day off, usually midweek, as well as their weekends off. So again, I remember the last time this happened, there was a bit of consternation with some of the staff because they felt that even though they're normally off Saturday and Sunday, they felt you were going to give them extra uh, days off kind of in lieu of the of, of, of them kind of the Saturday and Sunday being the public holidays. And if you're not going to do that, guys, just start looking at your roster now. I'm planning that uh, because what I find as I'm going to go on to talk about rosters in a second is look, you know, come come the middle of November, Auntie Mary is going to ring and say, we're having a few drinks on the 27th. Can you make it? Or the girls or the lads are going to say, will we go and watch a match? And people are going to start thinking, oh, yeah, definitely. I'll probably get a couple of extra days off. So I'll do that. So I'm trying to say to you, as we speak in late October, getting ahead of this, especially if it's bad news for people uh, around Christmas, just get your heads into your Christmas roster as early as you can and have a look about when will you need people and when will you be able to give people off. All right. And, and one point to make on that is merging my last slide and this slide is Saturday and Sunday, 25th and 26th are the public holidays. What, what many offices will do is they will give people paid days off on the 27th and 28th for the public holidays. So they'll transfer the benefit from the 25th and 26th, which will be unpaid days off weekend anyway. They will give the instead of paying people who are off on the weekend, they will give them paid days off on the Monday and Tuesday. Where you need to be careful is if you're up for doing that for your office, because your support office may be closed anyway, just be careful because you're doing that for one cluster of your employees, but you're not going to do anything for the shop employees. And again, just think that through, maybe check records as to what you may have done previously when um, when public holidays fell over a weekend, right? Um, and, and do, just like I'm telling you now, guys, public holidays are going to be an issue this year and you need to, uh, shop staff will presume that you're going to give them some extra benefit. So, so if you're not going to do that, get ahead of this. Um, so, okay, give some bonuses. Okay, so obviously, look, JP, JP obviously um, um, spoke beforehand on certainly why I found the, um, the, the small exemption is so, certainly something that people like to do and like to give a, um, a gift card. I've, I've availed of the MeTU a couple of times as well myself with, with our team. Um, <clears throat> first thing I'd say is in terms of any type of a bonus, right? If you do give something to employees at Christmas, is it a contractual requirement or is it at your discretion? So what you need to ask yourself there is, you know, have you just given it for five, six, seven, eight years in a row, irrespective of, you know, economic circumstances or absolute uh, work performance? Because if you have, you know, it may have moved into this custom and practice contractual entitlement rather than it's more ad hoc. You tend to give it if you've had a profitable year, or you tend to give it if there's you've exceeded the previous year or there's no real rhyme nor reason to how or when you give it. OK, that's the first thing I would say. All right. Um, because if employees have a reasonable expectation for some form of structured Christmas bonus um, contractually or historically, and if you're thinking, geez, guys, we've had a bit of a disaster of year now again, and, you know, well, I don't think we can afford kind of to, to, to give anything, geez, definitely start telling that to people as early as possible. OK, um, because once you reach the 5th, 6th, 7th of December, it's already spent. People will have an expectation that, oh, uh, look, I can put that couple of hundred quid on my credit card because I'm getting a double week or I'm getting an extra voucher or something um, from the from the boss down the line. So that will that will ease it off. So if you're not going to do it, pick your moment, lads, and try to break the news to them um, as early as possible. OK, um, and another little point on the likes of gifts and presents that comes up every single year, guys, is just have a bit of clarity on, you know, like, please, God, because of the excellent people you have they'll receive gifts from customers, suppliers, you know, um, um, and generally, you know, the office people will get some stuff, the shop people may get some stuff, all right? Um, have some sort of a policy, if it's not in your handbook, on to, you know, what happens to those gifts? Do they have to be declared to head office? Do they go into a central kitty and are raffled off? Can whoever gets it keeps it? What if one person gets 25 gifts and the two other people who may work just as hard for whatever reason don't get it what if the manager is given a gift and you know it's supposed to be to the team in a store but the manager just keeps it and puts it in the office and brings it home again some sort of little note or it could well be in your terms and conditions but you just want to have some sort of clarity for everybody on 
you know, if the likes of that happens, um, where where does it go? Who is it declared to just from a transparency point of view? Because it can lead to bad feeling and, and consternation and even accusations of, well, where did that come from? Did you pay for it? Didn't you pay for it? So again, again, I go back to my saying four words, four arm guys. So, 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 so have a little think about that. Um, yeah, Chris Kringle, Secret Santas, um, pound for pound, this has led to quite a few HR issues, you know, um, over, over, over time. Um, I, I would say, guys, you know, more especially of late in the last five years, I remember being part of this in an office 20 years ago and, you know, some... Some of the presents that were given were pretty close to the edge, but it just maybe wasn't wasn't you know wasn't as big a thing for people to take certain um, insults maybe now as as they would. Um, you know, my own pet hates about it is that look, you know, you're never going to get it's oh it's a hundred euro Chris Kringle, so let's go to a brilliant shop and buy a wonderful gift. It tends to be the office Chris Kringle. It's a tenner, right? So people may decide, well, what can I get someone from a tenner? I might get a joke or a gimmicky present instead of something that actually tries to pass off as a genuine gift, all right? Um, and, and, and then if you get some sort of a joke or a gimmicky present, you're really increasing the potential of it being inappropriate or being viewed as inappropriate, all right? And again, even if it's given in jest, uh, a line I often find myself saying um, to, to, you know, dignity at work issues and complaints, so it's, it's never how it was meant, it's always how it was received. OK, um, and also some people may not really naturally be fans of the likes of, of Chris Kringle. They may not be enthused by it or particularly want to take part in it, but they may feel, you know, intimidated or they'll be known as the office Grinch if they, you know, and they, they feel they have to spend a tenner on some fella they don't even know on the other side of the office, don't have a clue what he's into or not. And sure, what's the point of that? OK, so look, overall, without sounding like <laughs> the Grinch, you know, I, I probably would try to avoid it. OK, Um but if it is proceeding, um, another another aspect of it, which isn't which, which which isn't hugely comfortable, is that you know if it is this whole concept of secret Santa, not that most of the time everyone tends to know who's buying for them anyway. It gets out there through the gossip line, but but ultimately you don't. So if someone ends up opening up a hugely inappropriate present, then um, they may never actually know who received it. All they've known is that in the office, sitting at their desk working for you guys, someone's handed them this you know inappropriate lewd sexual innuendo filled gift and that becomes the issue so if you are proceeding with it if you don't kind of feel that tommy don't be a party pooper we might go ahead and do it what i would suggest is maybe you'd appoint one person there who maybe would take charge of a draw so that at least there's some sort of record of it as to who buys for who because if it's more public odds are it'll put more manners on whoever's whoever's buying for who okay Alcohol and drug testing. Um, I, 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 like guys, you may feel as I talk through this, I don't like to sit in the fence. I like to try to give an opinion and not kind of have a webinar where you you leave and say, Meh, you know, he, he talked about it, but I didn't get much direct advice from it. I like to try to give advice. Uh, but the likes of this one, it's very much going to be incident by incident based. OK, it's quite a difficult topic to navigate. You guys can, can Google it and you'll see a good half a dozen WRC cases where there's been, you know, serious awards to people uh, against an employer over the concept of, you know, being drunk on the job or, or being under the influence of drugs on the job. Okay. It has to start with quite a robust, clear, instructive policy that you have in your contracts of employment on your handbook, where, which is sets out very clearly to employees um, what your alcohol and drug, you know, testing or policy is. And if you don't have that, guys, you're three nil down on this one. Okay. Um, what I would say, some of the basics to start off with is if someone does report for work and you feel they're under, under the influence of something, you know, could well be one of your managers in stores where it starts, you try to get another member of the management team to corroborate this. Always have a witness in terms of, in terms of not being down to one person's opinion, because whether the person is under the influence of alcohol or drugs, you know, they can take offence and claim discrimination or victimisation by being accused of one person. So you try to have a second person to corroborate that there's certain behaviours or certain actions are leading you to believe there may be an issue. And then you refer to your policy and say, so, you know, because we have a suspicion or a for cause or, you know, um, we feel we're, we're, we're going to proceed now and ask you maybe to take a test. OK, and it has to be really through a, an occupational health support, really. OK, because obviously, especially if you're if you're quite negative about an employee for you, what you feel being under the influence of alcohol or drugs, you know, you certainly can't use some sort of 
uncalibrated over the counter kind of blow into the bag there and oh, you're in big trouble because it, it it reads red it has to be done properly through a, a, a blood test really through a, through a medical support so look what you do guys is like in the event of that have your policy is the first big big tip on that and secondly you try to get advice in real time the likes of ourselves you know your own hr departments your solicitor or whatever it is try to get advice in real time and we plan out a scenario there and then as to how to address the person deal with us in, the, in, a, in, a, in a competent manner okay seasonal hires okay and um, don't forget now you know the whole terms of employment act you have eight weeks to get your terms and conditions to somebody that's obviously superseded by their you know the 20 2019 law okay you have five days now to get somebody um well i say for requirement for contract not necessarily they have to get a letter containing their their basic um their basic five terms okay but sure to me lads you're just as well give them a contract read why, why produce a simple letter with five terms when you're just going to give them a contract but all of their terms all right but remember you have uh you have five days to do it so ideally you do it in advance of them starting um and remember if it's seasonal it's a fixed term contract start date end date okay remember the end dates so if you hire people on the first of december until the 15th of january Put a reminder on your phone straight away, lads, for the you know the 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 eighth of January week to go, where you can start to talk to these people about kind of finishing up in a week's time or whatever may be happening with them in a week's time if there's an extension. Even though they may be short-term seasonal hires, guys, get your induction training done as normal, your manual handling training, right? It's it's amazing the percentage of temporary workers like that that end up with grievances or issues or sore backs or accidents. Okay, and a lot of employers presume, Asher, sure, if they're only with me a couple of weeks, I don't have to tick all of the same boxes. You, you do. Okay. Um, a reminder that anybody on your stamp twos, okay, and um, they're allowed to work their 40 hours a week from 15th of December to the 15th of January. Okay. Um, and, and again, I, I'm saying the last point because it's, it's a historic thing that happens every year. Okay. If you're taking on five, 10 people for your Christmas cover, okay, you guys may have two or three. Um, ongoing roles afterwards all right um and obviously you're then going to make that call on you know the 10th of january you're going to say well we like betty and we like john but the rest of 80 can can go on away now all right try to have some sort of rationale with your management team that as you're reviewing these you know um 10 people maybe in a in, in a store you know just make sure your management team or their line managers or the people who are making a decision on these people you know have the same same concept as an annual review same content as a probation review you know there's timekeeping product knowledge attitude willingness to be flexible and help out but there's a couple of these pointers are kept in mind and there can be a little bit of a scoring system done that's fair and transparent if there's any bad feeling about with one of the two of the people who who aren't kept on when other people are kept on that you have some sort of logic and reasonable um information um as to, as to why they were kept on because grand you'll say abba tommy they're not with us long enough for unfair dismissal that's fine but they're with you long enough for the likes of discrimination claim so if they say well i i let the manager know i was gay and i wasn't kept on or i have a disability so i wasn't kept on or someone made advances towards me and i rejected them so i wasn't kept on again for you to have some sort of transparent little tick list and scoring list as to where, where you this why you selected some people to stay on with you and not others, it's always good to have. And so roster preparation, yeah, then guys, okay. I mean, look, like I said, in general, you know, this Christmas may be a more socially active Christmas than other than than than, than last year. Hopefully it will be anyway. Um, so again, give early notice to people. Okay. Stevens' day is a Sunday, guys. So if you do have people who don't regularly work um on a Sunday. But they're critical your management management maybe and they'll have to be in store to set up for things like sales on the sunday on stevens day you got to tell them that now because if you start telling them that two weeks beforehand and just put their name down you know you're good luck is all i'll say it yeah you'll be you know um so do start thinking about that start talking early on rosters okay um even students who are doing exams um try to get as early as possible try to get some dates from them as to when they're doing their exams and when they'll be finished and when they'll be available because it all plugs into you be do doing a uh, doing a fair roster even part-timers who are with you if there's flexible hours try to talk to them early about what you what what they're going to commit to to you for christmas and again when i say early lads in the next couple of weeks just have it nailed down because a couple of weeks out social calendars over christmas won't be full so you might get a commitment for people if you leave it until the middle of december to do it people will say oh no i didn't think i was working and i'm away that day or i'm doing something that day or i'm going out that night or something like that okay um and again maybe make sure everyone's clear about our own swapping shifts if that's the case all right um 
So they're the Christmas list. I suppose I included a final, a final slide really on, on, you know, happy new year, everybody. Now you're paying sick pay. Okay. Um, so this starts from next year. Um, so from the 1st of January, you're paying three days sick pay to, to people um, from day one, no waiting days. And that's going to rise over the next uh, three years, then to 2025 um, being, being 10 days. Okay. Um, one, one, wall I'm coming up with at the moment okay where, where it's going to require a bit of thought and we're possibly going to have to wait until there's some guidance notes um coming out from government on it well there's two there's two points I'd make which I, I, you know we need clarity on number one is okay to be fair to employees it's 70 percent of a day's pay and most of your shop uh, teams you know um maybe on a modest enough wage in the grand scheme of things so they're at home on day one they feel sick you know they're they're, they're just calling in sick for a day um Day one sick pay applies to them next year now. Um, they're on 100 quid a day. That's 70 quid sick pay you'd have to give them. But they have to produce a medical cert in order to avail of that. So the cost of a medical cert, you know, they're sick at home, genuinely unwell with a sore stomach or something like that. They got to go to a doctor to get a medical cert, 50, 60 quid in order to get 70 quid off you. That's one little pinch point. Another little pinch point is if you have an existing sick pay scheme, most employers don't have any, don't ha do have a waiting day on you. So, you don't get sick pay for the first day, maybe the second day, and then after two days or after three days, sick pay starts. What we have to really get our teeth into in the next while is how do you merge in this new statutory sick pay with an existing sick pay scheme? Okay. Um, and what happens to your existing sick pay scheme after the three days statutory sick pay scheme are used up? Okay. Um, we're, we're coming up against a few walls and that it's just something for you guys to be aware of as well, sharing a problem nearly with you guys. If you have some form of internal sick pay scheme, how it merges up with what the new state scheme will be. The minimum wage, guys, is moving to 10.50 from the 1st of January, as was announced in the budget. Um, look, I think the government have tried to explain that they're trying to offset it with, 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 with a different, uh, making changes to tax credits. But ultimately, you know, um, your, your accounts team, your finance team will, 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 will kind of connect that out to you as to what the, what, what the cost uh, end up may be. But just from the 1st of January, minimum wage is, is, is 10.50. Um, reminder that there is law expected from the over at some stage in quarter four on remote working and flexible working. Or what I've said there is obviously remote working will be in a, in a retail environment. Remote working really isn't something that that's too much to worry about for shop workers. But obviously your, your support office staff is one thing. Flexible working is something I'm still going to be in my bonnet about. Okay, I do feel that kind of um, it, it's remote and flexible working legislation is coming in and everyone's focusing on the remote aspect of it. Um, I do get the feeling that employers are going to be under more pressure to find accommodations to people, e.g. people coming back after sick leave, um, mothers coming back after maternity leave. Um, they're going to have to find ways that were kind of to actually deliver reasonable requests for changes to the roster for certain times of the day to suit childcare for mothers and fathers, for um, certain shifts and, and security of shifts and set shifts to enable people book with confidence in creches because creches generally don't allow kind of um, flexible days, right? So again, flexible working uh, legislation, we keep an eye out for it in quarter four as it comes in. And finally, just a reminder on your right to disconnect policy. I know it's a couple of months old now since the code of practice came in, but I'd hope you're all taking some heed of it, okay? And again, people like your shop managers, your store managers, that they're not receiving calls on their day off to wonder where's that dress left for Mrs. O'Malley or the electricians calling in, where are the keys for the, for the, the power box? Again, you try to get ahead of these guys and, and avoid the likes of that happening. Okay, find a different system, find a handover diary, some sort of reminders where people, people when they're off, they're off. And again, for your office teams, simple things like provide them with a work laptop, provide them with a work phone so that they can mute emails, they can mute um, um, and work related messages and emails on there when, when, they're, when they're off duty or in the evening, um, or certainly put some sort of a disclaimer or a policy out there that look guys, just because certain members of management may work on social hours, uh, it doesn't mean you guys um, all have to. So, so um, I would hope you're, that's coming along nicely and turning around in your brains uh, a right to disconnect uh, policy. Um, so that's me for now. I hope, again, powered through it, but I hope you found it of interest. And look, if, if I touched on anything there that you guys want to delve a bit deeper into, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Look, you all have a couple of hours complimentary uh, or it's sponsored by REI on your behalf with us. So don't hesitate to send us an email or give us a call. Great stuff. Listen, thanks, Tommy. Um, so I guess what you're saying, to paraphrase the Taoiseach, is that what goes on in the uh, Christmas party can still go on in the Christmas party. Is that right? 
yeah, what goes on the Christmas party can still go on in the Christmas party, but like every Christmas party, the employer can't wash their hands of it. <laughs> well, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. OK, um, listen, I know there's a few questions that came up. Um, yeah. And uh, is JP are you still there, are you? Can you uh, maybe just turn your screen on there if you're around? Um, and I, I've got one coming up for you uh, shortly. Um, <clears throat> But I'm just going to spin through a, a couple of these. I know that uh, there, was, there was one I know that Brian just put up there around um, uh, templates for policy documents. I know he was thinking of the flexible working one, I think. But is there is there have you got templates, Tommy? And are those things that you could um, you know easily just send on a basic template of some of these policies if people asked you? Yeah, we can do something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So just we make contact with you is the message. Yeah. Depending on the template and depending on what it's for, things like a flexible working and stuff like that. Um, uh, I, I'm not going to do it until the legislation comes out. We see the small print of it. Okay. Right. And uh, things like way to disconnect. Yeah, we've written an article. We might have done an article in the Retail Times in it, but yeah, we can we can send out a few reminders on that of uh, post webinar issues. We can do something maybe the next member update or something. I'll, I'll talk yeah. about what you've on that. Yeah. Okay. Great stuff. Um, the the one came here from Jackie Murphy right at the very beginning, and it, I think participants to a Christmas party not be told in advance of so this was all around I think the point was yes make sure these things are notified to people in advance of something yeah. happening not afterwards yeah? yeah yeah so look I'm trying to obviously throw a bit of humanity onto a communication don't just say hey you guys at the Christmas party don't do a b c d and e right you obviously soften it and say look guys we're really looking forward to having a Christmas party it'd be great to get back and look, blame me if you want to <laughs> say, you know, HR has to have, you know, dipped its oar in here and just a few friendly reminders. That's the logic, all right? That it's about responsible fun. And, yeah. but at the same time, there is a huge legal reason for sending that. It, it doesn't mean you've completely washed your hands from, you know, Jimmy fawning all over Mary at, okay, at the park. doesn't mean that that doesn't have consequences for Jimmy. It just means that you've actually been very clear to all people in advance i mean that there's there you know there things like your bullying and harassment policy will apply to behaviors at the christmas party you know? yeah yeah so you you're covering yourself as much as possible should they absolutely, absolutely. but you're also trying direction. to prevent i know you know if, if someone's going to get have one too many and behave a certain way they may do it anyway but the aim is by sending this you're just doing a friendly reminder in a couple of days build up that may just you know remind people that we're not completely cutting loose either here yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, JP, this this might be yours. I'm not sure whether it's yours or whether it's Tommy's actually, but are 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 high or are rewards allowable and not included in the 500 euro voucher? If you've given any rewards during the year, um, <laughs> that's a physical item or a cash reward, it uses the exemption. That's it. And the uh, the, the voucher is then not available, tax free anyway. And there's a huge amount of companies now. Who give rewards through the year because they started it last year and they just pay the, the income tax and gross it up in payroll right okay so your message here but you, you know clear message as far as me to you is concerned is there's 500 euros here they have had a reward during the course of the year they've got up to 500 euros come to you get a gift card support them that way yeah that's it yeah absolutely Absolutely. Brilliant. OK. Only too uh, happy to help. I, I, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the, the From Vanessa here, Tommy, are public holiday, not the 25th and 26th, being a seven day business? It's back to this issue again, isn't it, of the the clarity around uh, these things falling at the weekend? Yeah. Yeah. And look, and look again, guys, sometimes in three minutes in a webinar, like what, I, what I'm about to say may even sound even more confusing. Give us a call and we'll try and explain it to you as best as, best as possible, okay? Um, but the public holidays are the 25th and 26th of December and the 1st of January. So this, that they are the public holidays, okay? Fact, in law, okay? Um, how an employer satisfies an employee's entitlement, there are certain options. So... So what you can do is you can work somebody Monday to Friday uh, and up to the 24th. They get paid for those five days. You pay them for the Saturday, pay them for the Sunday, even though they're off at home having turkey, right? That's you satisfying the public holiday entitlement. And then Monday, the 27th is a normal working day. You've already satisfied um, the public holidays. Or the 25th and 26th can be unpaid, 
but then you still owe people those two paid days and you give them paid days off on the Monday and Tuesday instead. That happens sometimes again around Paddy's. If Paddy's ever falls on a weekend, it's, you know, everyone gets a bank holiday Monday off, let's say for Paddy's. Okay. So it's the same concept. So, but it's a bank holiday, the Monday. It's never the public holiday. The 17th of March is the public holiday. What mm-hmm. most offices do, what most businesses do is instead of paying somebody for a weekend day and satisfying it, they transfer the benefit onto maybe the next available non-weekend day. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. So, okay. and for some people, it won't be a full day. So again, some people for the 25th, and because for part-timers, it's based on their hours in the build-up to it. So again, somebody, because of a certain part-time roster, they worked for the 26th, 25th of December, maybe due 3.9 hours entitlement for that public holiday. Okay, so again, they're, they're sitting at home on the 25th of, of December, but their employer is paying them 3.9 hours in that day, even if they don't work it. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like a complex place. The, the, yeah. Yes, it's you're going to get some calls on this one. Yeah, 100%. Look, we, we do every year anyway, but especially when it, because, because, the, so cal- the calculation of the public holiday entitlements is one, is one thing I'm floating guys to get ahead of. The second thing, though, is definitely with, I think especially some of your senior staff, because a lot of people who've been served their time through a shop, they may have a Monday to Friday roster. It's a horrendous Christmas for them, okay? Because usually they'll have a Saturday and Sunday off, and they might have a Christmas day on a Tuesday off as well, or a Wednesday. This year, right, on their Saturday and Sunday off, it's Christmas day, and you may even want them in on the Sunday, which isn't a working day for them, to work on St. Stephen's Day, okay? Mm-hmm. And I found that if you wait until if you presume that they get this and they're going to know this and you wait until the middle of December to break it to them, all hell will break loose. So get ahead of it now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, is this, this the busiest time of the year coming up to Christmas? Is your busiest time, Tommy, just as a quick aside? The, the build up to Christmas. Yeah. But then you hit Christmas week and it tends to go quieter because people, <laughs> people, people can catch somebody robbing from the till Christmas week and they'll say, oh God, I'll deal with it later. We're just, yeah. you know, because obviously you're selling, please God, and it's busy and you don't have the time to think about kind of HR mm-hmm. stuff, you know, so it yeah. reaches that tipping yeah. point where, you know, yeah. kind of w- once you're in the absolute eye of the storm, it does tend to tend to drop off a little bit. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And um, all has raised a question here um, around the stamp two stuff, which is I, I know you, you came to this, didn't you? I think uh, you maybe just remind us in terms of the hours that they can or, or the, the, um, the time when the staff to 15th, 15th of December to 15th of January. Okay, when, so that can go back, they can go from 20 to 40 hours yeah. yeah okay brilliant okay um uh, this this is a good one from vanessa here right how, how are other retailers managing when alarm call outs are necessary so so what do you give i mean presumably this is this is throughout the year isn't it really mm. um but particularly mm. christmas so what, what what are other people doing what's the sort of does this come up much with you um not, not really not not hugely okay i mean it, well, it comes up in the context that obviously there's a lot of in certain areas where there might be, you know, social disturbances regularly and the alarm goes off regularly. Obviously, if it's one one Muggins is the only person who has the phone and gets the calls all the time. Yes, that can lead to, a, you know, a, 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 a grievance or an issue. Um, I suppose, ideally, you try to have some sort of, you know, um, pattern, shift pattern or that, you know, certain people are on call for this alarm at a certain time, but there's an ability for it to be passed off to somebody else and somebody else. And you probably have some sort of arrangement where if there is a call out, there's some sort of reward or pay for them at a certain double time, maybe if there is ever a call out, you know, um, it, I mean, I understand that may be asked in the context of pay, but it may also be context of, of um, right to disconnect. So what I'm getting at is, you know, ideally you don't have just one person who works shift in the shop and then is simply on call all the time whenever an alarm may go off. You know, yeah. I wouldn't yeah. say it's, it's not a huge issue if it's if it goes off once a year or less. But obviously, if this if something in Dublin City, it's next to a couple of late pubs that close and regularly there can be alarm call outs. It's something you have to look at. You try to find, you know, um, try to deflect it away from it being one person all the time. Yeah, no, got you. And I know you raised this around, you know, your slide around remote working and, and flexible working. Yeah. And clearly mm-hmm. remote working in retail terms is more difficult. Yeah. And seem to be quite a divide emerging here between those people that work in retail in office settings and those yep. that work in retail in, in 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 on the shop floor settings if you like and the, the things are probably becoming quite merged now as well in terms of online shopping and all of that yep. uh, distribution and logistics and so forth but um 
but in terms of you, you mentioned there about flexible working. So can you give us a bit of an idea of what you mean by flexible working? What's a good flexible working arrangement in your in your mind? Uh, look, the vast majority of people who who, who work with me, who, who need me, all right, are you know the smaller REI members, pound for pound, all right, and I know they have you. They do the rosters, or they have a small management team to do the rosters. You know, they live and they need a level of flexibility there. They need a level of cover to give everybody a certain amount of, you know, midweek days on, midweek days off. Okay. Um, but then let's say you have a situation where, and I'm going to use a mother or a father here. Okay. One or two kids are now going to national school or there's, you know, baby and there's child minding, right? Obviously, you know, if an employer can show a level of flexibility, it may lead to a situation where one or other of the parents, and to be honest, you know, usually a mother steps out of a workforce maybe. Okay, and, and, and so they're lost then from the workforce and it's harder for them to seamlessly in a couple of years later, rejoin and continue their career where they were. So I think that's, that's in, a, in, a, in a very simplistic form kind of saying, well, right, what the government's aim by bringing in the likes of a, um, a demand on employer for flexible working is, you know, if you get a situation where in a, in a store where there's a flexible workplace, someone says, look, I'm coming back from maternity leave or I've, you know, I've been out sick now and I still have a, a sore back or something, all I can do is three days. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Employer is going to say, "Ooh, maybe I could do three days, but I'm not sure about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday because that means that the rest of the staff have to do a higher percentage of weekend days or whatever it may be." But the employee will say, "Well, the crash or any childminder I go to, they won't work of me ringing them on a Friday saying next week I need Tuesday, Thursday, Friday because they will say that crash will say well, we need to plan our rosters too, so you need to come to, come back with a with a set day, and that's the conundrum." Okay, mm -hmm. and at the moment, employers. Um, you know, our clients are kind of saying, well, look, you know, really the need for us to have flexibility kind of Trump, we'd like to work with you, we want to work with you. Three days might be the issue, but set hours, or again, maybe someone says, no, I can only work the eight to three shift so I can pick up from, you know, I can do do a swap. My, my husband and my wife work shift work, so I need to do this type of shift pattern so I can fit in with that. Um, employers kind of are tempted to say, oh God, if you ask for it, everyone's going to ask for it, you know, and they tend to shy away from it that's probably going to put more pressure on this new legislation coming in is really going to put more, more under pressure on employers to, to, to say yes to, to far more of this and offer, offer, offer solutions rather than kind of abdicating it and saying, no, sorry, we just can't deliver it. Mm, yeah. Interesting times to come, I think, Tommy, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. Tommy, JP, uh, I think we're coming to an end. There's no more questions that have come through. So, um, can I just thank you both? Uh, I, I hope that uh, JP, there'll be a few queries coming your way for me to you gift card for Christmas. Let's hope that there uh, sort of seventy-seven people on here today, so that uh, you know maybe you'll get sixty of them at least coming back to you. That'll be great. And uh, and Tommy, as always, um, it's been brilliant. Thank you very much. Incredibly I'm informative not. from both of you, particularly from you, Tommy. And um, dare I say it? Could I wish you a happy Christmas on this <laughs> one? <laughs> and that it's not Christmas with the cranks in your house. Very good. Thanks a million, guys. Right. And, Thanks, uh, guys. Thanks, Thanks, everybody Thank else. You. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.